In this video, we'll revisit the question of the box counting dimension for a circle. So remember that this is the relationship we're working with. n of s is the number of boxes needed to cover a shape where the boxes have a side s. And it's given by this relationship where d is the box counting dimension. And we're interested in looking at what happens to this. This equation is strictly only true as s gets smaller and smaller and smaller, closer and closer and closer to zero. So we want to look at pretty small boxes. So here's a circle. And um, on this circle, I've superimposed a grid. And let's say that the size of this grid is a half. And um, it's sort of arbitrary what I choose for that size because that's um, uh, a choice of units. This could be a half, is it a half a millimeter, a half a foot, a half an inch, who knows? So then the question is, well, what do I even mean by small? How small does S have to be? Well, we'll see that we can determine that experimentally, but what it's going to depend on is that we want the box size to be small relative to the shapes that we're working with so that we have lots and lots of little boxes here and not so many, very few of these kind of half-filled boxes. In any event, let's call this S of a half. So then we're going to need to count all the boxes in here. Uh, and rather than do that live on camera, I did that um, a little while ago. Um, it's actually not as much work as it thinks, as one might think, because there's a rectangle in here that you can count pretty easily this by this, and then you just have to count the sort of oval edges. So I did that, and I got 260. So for that, n of s is 260. And then the next thing I want to do is, well, what happens when those boxes get smaller? So then I took the same circle, and I superimposed a grid on it that was twice as small, they're twice as many squares. So this is, um, uh, uh, the side is a quarter. Or I shouldn't say they're twice as many squares. Um, there's twice as many this way and twice as many that way. All right, so then I would need to count um, all of these. And you can imagine that that gets um, pretty tedious and you would be right, but I did it anyway. Um, so I did that again earlier, and I actually first I doubled this, made this bigger in a photocopier so it was easier to see stuff. And there's the result of doing that, lots of counting. And again, there's a big almost rectangular or almost square region in the middle, there it is, that's easy to count. You just do that times that, and then you count up these um, edges. And when I did that, I got, what did I get, 992. Okay, 992. So that's the data for this, uh, for this circle <clears throat> for two different grid sizes. So now the challenge is, how can we estimate D from these two? And in the past, I've been more or less just sort of saying, oh, look, we can see right away what D has to be. Or I've been using maybe also the fact that we know what D should be. But what if as is often the case, we don't know what D should be, and it's not immediately obvious what sort of pattern we can exploit to figure out this equation. So we're going to need to do a little bit of algebra. Um, and then in the next video, we'll learn a geometric way to do this. So, but let's start with the algebra. So a bit of algebra. We're going to be working with this equation, and we're interested in D, so let's take the logarithm of both sides of this equation so that we can bring d downstairs. So first, I take the log of the entire left-hand side and then the log of the entire right-hand side. So log of all of that, log of all of that. The left-hand side I'll leave alone. Now here I have log of something times something else. And remember that logarithms turn multiplication into addition. So 
So log of C plus this thing is log of C plus, oh, excuse me, log of C times this thing is log of C plus log of that thing. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the exponent property of logs and take this exponent out front and downstairs. So I'm going to end up with log n of s equals log c plus d log 1 over s. So these two equations are the same. They're just written in different forms. The equality, they say the same thing. They relate n, c, d, and s. Um, but this form will be easier to work with in what we're going to do next because the d is downstairs. Remember, d, the dimension, is what we're after here. So now let's think about how to solve for d. So this was the equation we just figured out. A little bit of algebra to get here. And what's tricky is we don't know d, but we also don't know c. And in this particular instance, we have two data points, s and n, right? Two pairs. So when s is a half, n is 260. When s is a quarter, n is 992. So I'll denote these pairs s1, n1, and s2, n2. So let's see. So we have two data points. So S1 and N1, S2 and N2. We've box counted twice for different sides. So I'm going to plug this pair of data points in here, and then I'm going to plug this pair of data points in there, and we're going to get two equations. So let's do that. I'll use yet another color. So I'm going to plug in data point 1. So I replace n with n1. C is a constant. It, it stays the same no matter what s is or n is. So uh, it, uh, it's just log c plus d log 1 over s1. So that's plugging in data point 1. Now let's plug in data point 2. Log n2 equals log c minus d log 1 over s2. So uh, this equation, I just plugged in data point 1 and then data point 2. And now I'm going to do um, the following. I'm going to subtract one equation from another. And the reason I'm going to do that is because log c minus log c is going to give me 0. So then I'm going to get rid of those annoying c's. So let's do that. The left-hand side becomes log n1 minus log n2. Log c minus log c is 0 d log 1 over s1 minus is going to give me this. d log 1 over s1 minus d log 1 over s2. All right, we're almost there. We want to solve for d. So um, I'm going to factor a d out over here. So this is log n1 minus log n2 equals d log 1 over s1 minus log 1 over s2. Oops, that should be a 2, not squared. And now the last step is to divide both sides of the equation by this term in parentheses, then I've isolated d, or solved for d, which is what we wanted to do. So carrying on, let's do that. Log 
N1 minus log N2 divided by that term in parentheses log 1 over S1 minus log 1 over S2 equals D. So at long last, we have an expression for D, for the box counting dimension. So this says if we take two data points, S1, N1, S2, N2, and we want to know what D is, this is the formula that um, will determine D. OK, so let's put this formula for D to use. Um, so this will be N1 and S1. I should make a note of that. So this is, this is 1, that's 2. So we're going to plug in here, do a little bit of work on our calculator, and see what we get. So D is going to be log 260 minus log 992 divided by log 1 over a half minus log 1 over a quarter. All right. So, OK, let's evaluate this on the calculator. 260 logarithm minus 992 logarithm equals minus 0 0.582 minus 0 0.582. And let's see what we got going on down here. 1 over 1 over 2 is the same as 2. 1 over 1 over 4 is the same as 4. So this is log 2 minus log 4. So 2 log minus 4 log equals minus uh, 3.01. Minus 0.301, I should say. All right, so let's do this division. 0 0.582 divided by 0 0.301, the moment of truth. 1.93. So we get the D roughly 1.93. OK. So let's step back. We've just done a whole bunch of work to figure out the dimension of a circle. And we know the dimension of a circle should be 2. Here they are, two-dimensional circles. And yet we didn't get 2. So why is that? Well, there are uh, a couple of reasons. It's possible that I miscounted here. My eyes might have glazed over. But much more likely, the reason is, is that remember that um, this equation is only true as s goes to 0, as s, s has to get really small, small compared to the shape that we're working with. So if I wanted to get a better estimate for the dimension, I would want to use maybe forget about this, and do this, and then grids that were uh, had a size um, not a quarter but an eighth. Um, that would be even more of an arduous, difficult counting task. Maybe I'll need to then go to a sixteenth, and I could keep doing this, see what happens to these expressions, and I would get a number that would get closer and closer to D. So in practice, if you didn't know what the dimension was supposed to be, you would let s get um, smaller, smaller still, smaller still, keep calculating this, and see if d is approaching um, some limit. So in the next video, we'll carry that out. And I'll show you a graphical way, a, a sort of more geometric way of picturing this um, that, that might be more appealing than, than all of this algebra. But I still think this algebra is important to go through. So, you, so um, you can actually carry this out, plug in some of these numbers if you'd like. So we'll do that in the next video. But before you do that, um, you can try this idea out with, on the next quiz.